has gone on to build a successful solo career in the entertainment and creative industry and is the composer and singer of this year's National Day Parade theme song called Not Alone. In this edition of A Letter to Myself, host Joel Chua finds out how Benjamin has evolved, beginning with the major influence that has been a constant throughout his various pursuits from the time he was a national swimmer. I think the threat would kind of be my dad. It's strange to say that, but, you know, he was so hands-on and instrumental. He still is, you know. Um, he was big on sports. He was the one who put me through uh, the swimming program when I was young. He taught me about discipline and how sticking to something for the long haul can really be benefits, but you have to stick through it. And um, he was a big music lover as well. He still is. So music was always part of our household uh, with my mom. And a lot of the influence of my whole life came trying to emulate my dad's work ethic, his passions. Um, and I'm still the most nervous when he's in the crowd at shows, you know. Um, he's the most critical being, <laughs> um, uh, like, like a, he's also like a vocal arranger of sorts. So he's, um, he's extra picky with things. Uh, but it's good. I, I, I love my dad a lot. And um, yeah. You've done many things through your career, but of course at this point in time, you're most well known for your music. Was music always on the cards for you? At what point in time did it feel like it was starting to get serious? Well, it was never serious being Singaporean. <laughs> but it was really just the greatest hobby, I think, for me. Um, but yeah, I was, I was born into, thankfully, a pretty music-heavy family. Um, my mom and dad both sang in the choir when, uh, when they were younger. And we would have these fun little family jam sessions every every Sunday or so, you know, with my sister. So uh, music was always playing on stereo speakers in the house. It was a big thing. It really was not a career until um, until I finished Army, to be honest. Uh, before that, I was actually going to try and do radio. Thankfully, I did not. Cause <laughs> ouch, 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 what, what do you mean by thankfully you did oh, not? Nice. <laughs> the most stressful job in the world. Oh. I don't know how you guys do it. I love it. Don't get me wrong, like, like, I didn't mean it, but I'm kidding. Like, I worship But it's the most stress-inducing job in the world. Um, so, I think, but, but I think it was also a blessing in disguise, because um, in my time on radio, I was on Lush at the time, um, RIP. Uh, but I got to meet, speak to, and um, I guess, catch some light off these great individuals who I admire from a distance, you know, all these um, music producers, uh, theatre directors, artists, singers, and uh, just picking apart how they tick um, really helped me form my own uh, bl blueprint of the kind of artist I wanted to be, yeah. But what was your first big break? That one experience or one event that made you feel, you know what, yeah, this is starting to get serious now, I could make a living off of this. Yeah, I don't think I had that one Singapore Idol moment, man. Um, I, I, I never had that golden ticket thing. I think it was just little milestones that I kept pushing to myself. For example, like, you know, getting a, a part-time job on Lush, um, you know, getting some airplay on, on other stations when I started being a musician. I think YouTube at the time was popping off. I, I, I came up at a time of, I guess, social media 1.0, right, where all artists started to reform their craft for the online space. So um, I think just through constant reinventing of myself, um, these were the little, like, yardsticks. Um, yeah, so it was really progressive, and uh, I had to just keep going, yeah. If you were to look back at the career right now, that was a highlight, but the one thing that, you know, when you think about, gives you that sense of satisfaction and pride, that one experience, what, what would it be? I mean, I can think of two right now. I think one would be, um, well, the Sam Willows, my band, we had a 2016 concert. That was a highlight for me because, we had to build everything up from the ground, you know, from scratch. Um, and we were able to sell out the place, you know, we, we felt like um, we wanted to achieve a lot of things and we did. Um, and it really just helped instill more belief in us. But I think also the, the, the biggest thing for me now would be um, doing these NDP shows, to be honest. It's so yeah. crazy um, to be a part of something so seismic. And I think to have a song of mine being sung so widely um, and to have feedback that that colossal about the work I've done. I've never experienced that, so that's kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, w would it be right to say that the first the first NDP outing, so to speak, was uh, was in 2015 with the Samuel Lowe's? It was, it was yeah. um, SG50. Yeah, uh, the, about the big one. Yeah, the, the big one, the very big one. Yeah. If you were to, to look back at your career right now, right, the, the growth and the development that you've experienced through these many years, 
And if you could write a letter to your younger self, at whatever age you imagine the younger self to be, at whatever age you think that younger version needed to hear this letter, what would you say to that version of yourself? That's such a good question. Um, I would say, one, don't chase, attract. Two, um, definitely enjoy the process, live in the moment. And three, I would say, um, to forgive easier. Yeah, to forgive easier. Okay, let's let's take a look at lots to unpack. <laughs> yes, a, a lot to unpack. Let's take take a look at the first one first. Right? Um, don't chase, attract. Why was this message important for your younger version to to have heard? I think I was so impressionable. You know, um, constantly trying to prove myself, prove that I was worthy of. The attention I was getting, you know, I was trying to work doubly hard to make sure that people wouldn't doubt that I was here. But I think that it was also so much overcompensating, and um, as the kids say, cringe. Um, and, I, and I came across this German f uh, phrase a few days ago. That said, it's a beautiful phrase. It says, uh, "If you focus on chasing butterflies, they will fly away. But if you build a beautiful garden, the butterflies will come." And even if they don't, at least you have a beautiful garden. And I was like, that's so beautiful. That's so, uh, that rings so true to, I felt what has worked in the latter parts of my career, which was stop trying to chase a dragon. Um, 